Hi there traders and welcome to this week's video blog. I uh, hope it finds you well. As I mentioned in the email, uh, apologies for the lack of updates over the last, uh, last three or four weeks. Uh, this has been purely due to me getting back into my intraday trading and spending a lot more time on the chart, which has meant come the weekend I've been a little bit jaded, a little bit charted out. So um, recording a video hasn't been on the top of my priorities. However, now that I've reacclimatized, I've been doing it for a few weeks now, uh, I'm now feeling a lot better come the weekend. So uh, thus the reason for the blog, and I hope to maintain uh, this 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 regular blog on, on on a weekly basis, or at least every couple of weeks. So today I want to concentrate on looking at pairing a very strong currency against a very weak currency because this is one of the most effective and most simple concepts that we can take advantage of to make some good returns. So I'm going to use a particular currency pair to give an example because it's been very interesting of late and is likely to continue to be very interesting going forward as well and that's the euro versus the great british pound uh, because this is a, an extreme example of pairing weakness versus strength in a currency pair it's taking advantage of the extreme euro weakness versus the strong great british pound so let's have a look at that let's understand why that was the case well the euro we saw was a very very nice set up for an end of trend reversal so here we saw price double top we saw price give us some divergence from peak to peak as we saw here we saw a higher peak on the stochastic a lower peak we also got a fibonacci extension as well to say that the market had overextended itself and it was also into the big 1.4000 big round number there as well so it hit the 1.618 fibonacci and also a big round number so many many factors confirming a very nice end of trend reversal there now getting into this trade was a little bit tricky or well, getting into the trade for an efficient entry was a little bit tricky because it was such a sinister reversal but having now got back into my intraday trading i'm paying a lot more attention to the news because a lot of the a lot of the trades that we take intraday we need to be aware of what's going on with the news so i've been paying a lot more attention to the news i wanted to know why it was such a sinister move i expect nice reversals off big levels of resistance but it was quite a sinister move so i wanted to understand why that was the case and really it was the language coming from the ecb the ecb was threatening that they were going to act if the market was going to push this currency pair any higher. And the reason for that is that the high exchange rate was hurting the European exporters. It was making them very, very expensive and was hurting their profits. So that was going to potentially damage the recovery in the Eurozone. So the ECB wanted to obviously put some wording out to the market to let them know that they're prepared to act if the market carried on pushing it higher. So they, they said to the market effectively that if you push it any higher then we are prepared to implement some easing potentially some quantitative easing uh, and if they do do that that's going to be huge for the euro in terms of it's going to weaken the currency pair if they're printing a lot more euros it's going to weaken the euro quite considerably now they they've only just come out with the threats and that's been enough to move the market quite sharply to the downside but they haven't gone through with it yet so they have a meeting, I believe, in the early part of uh, early part of June, where they will be looking at confirming what they're going to do, whether they're going to take any action. So this will be a really critical point for the euro. If they do follow through with some form of action, then it's likely that the market is going to continue heading strongly lower and, and the euro weakness is likely to remain. So watch this space on that on that particular on that particular uh, economic event, whether they uh, whether they do take advantage of any action or whether they just sit on their hands and wait to see what the market does, which they could do because the market has already come back off that big round number at the 1.4000 level. But if they do take action and it does weaken the euro, then this is going to provide some very, very nice moves over the next few weeks and months taking advantage of this euro weakness. Now, what we want to do when we find a pair or a currency which is very very weak we want to pair that against the currency that is very very strong and one of the strongest pairs that is out there right now is the great british pound and that is just because the news and the fundamentals coming out of 
the uh, of the UK are brilliant. Retail sales are improving. Unemployment figures are getting better. GDP is still positive. So there's lots and lots of factors coming out the out, out of the UK. Um, confirming that this is a very strong recovery from the recession and there is now starting to be rumors out there that the uh, the the monetary policy committee are potentially at the bank of england are potentially starting to split in terms of their thoughts on whether they're going to in increase interest rates and if they increase interest rates that's going to lead to earlier than expected that's going to lead to strength in the pound so the pound fundamentally and technically is immensely strong so looking to take advantage of the two and putting them together is very very powerful so we'll look at the pound here as we can see from a technical perspective very very bullish very very strong making higher highs and higher lows continuously very very strong in comparison to the euro that has reversed quite strongly so going forward the euro gbp as we can see here has been very weak because the euro has been extremely weak against the very strong pound which has thus meant the euro against the pound has been heading strongly lower so opportunities from an end of day and an intraday perspective have been absolutely fantastic and if the euro does follow through with their threats and the uk growth and economic improvements continue this is likely to continue for the next few weeks and months and provide some further opportunities to take advantage of again in line with your strategies in line with your technicals but with that underlying confidence that the euro is extremely weak and the pound is extremely strong so that's a really really nice example so you can also use the euro against other strong pairs the aussie's been pretty strong as well so um the chart here has been moving down pretty nicely so euro has been weaker against the strong aussie and also euro cad the cad has been getting stronger dollar cad that is so if we look at the dollar cad chart here we can see that the dollar cad which has meant the dollar is the base canadian dollar is the terms so if the market is if the chart is moving down it means that the dollar is weak and the canadian dollar is strong so we then look for the euro cad as the cross pair for a potential opportunity as we can see here we broke this strong uptrend and ever since middle of march we've been heading strongly lower so this looks very very interesting all the way down really to this previous level which was which was very very strong resistance then support so potentially there's movement for quite a significant amount of pips to get down to that level so that's almost 400 pips uh, I'm not saying it's just going to drop there it's going to cycle like it does but again with the confidence that the euro is weak and the canadian dollar is strong again this all this all does come down to whether the ecb acts if they don't you may not find the extreme euro weakness so we may have to wait and see again let the charts tell you what has been happening and if the euro weakness continues then play against the very strong pairs such as euro pound euro cad euro oz and you'll find that trading becomes a little bit not easier but more rewarding in terms of the pit returns that you can get because when you do compare extreme strength versus extreme weakness you do get some really nice moves there's nothing worse than being in a currency pair where strong against strong or weak against weak because you'll find that it doesn't really go anywhere and it makes your job as a trader very very difficult uh, in terms of looking at other strengths and weaknesses well the japanese yen is a funny old one because it's it's seen as a safe haven so it means that things like the ukraine issues or any world events that a lot of money will go into the yen as a safe haven and it will strengthen the yen so we've seen of late that the market has been coming down quite strongly and has hit a nice level of support the Euro ukraine issue has subsided a little bit and we've seen the market has reacted to this particular level here again with some subtle but still divergence on the stochastic and a big low test bar on the market has pushed higher so if the dollar yen currency pair is likely to head up from this this support level here what that's going to mean is dollar is getting stronger the yen is getting weaker we know that the yen government is printing money to weaken the yen so we know that there is a f there is 
a fundamental reason why the yen should weaken because we know the government are easing in Japan so if this momentum continues what's that going to mean for us it's going to mean that the yen is extremely weak so we're looking to compare this extreme weakness against strength so we're then looking at the likes of the pound Aussie etc so we'd be looking at pound yen for some nice strong buy opportunities as it pushes higher um, we're looking at Aussie yen if we can find that Aussie yen just here so as we can see uh, market has been heading strongly down but are we going to get the market pushed back higher I don't know we'd have to wait and see we'd have to wait for confirmation from a technical perspective but we can see and compare the two for me the pound yen looks a little bit stronger than the the Aussie yen so we'd have to wait and see on the particular Aussie yen because it looks a little bit mixed from my perspective here uh, maybe CAD yen we've we've just identified that the CAD is very very strong so CAD yen potentially yeah we can see that's pushed up quite strongly it has been coming up um, from its January lows so potentially the CAD yen and the pound yen look very interesting from a buy perspective if the yen weakness continues from that support level so hopefully that's given you a few examples some really really powerful examples and, and something to watch over the next few weeks but the key thing here is the principle of looking at finding pairs where there's extreme weakness against extreme strength or vice versa and then looking to trade in line with that so keep your eye on the euro gp keep your eye on cad yen keep your eye on pound yen if these extreme weaknesses and strengths continue there's going to be some very very nice moves and lots of opportunities for you to take advantage of and make some good pip returns so hopefully that's explained the principle giving you a lot to think about and more importantly a lot to go away and start looking at in terms of live trading so i'll wrap up there leave it with you have a great bank holiday if you are uh, in the uk or the us uh, and have a great trading week and i'll speak to you very soon all the best